Hello, today I want to compare the differences between a Francis Barker M73 military compass which is manufactured in the UK and with the Kamenga 3H compass, one of these, which is manufactured in America. And just to make it a little bit interesting, what I'll do is I'll also throw into the mix a silver Exposition 4 base plate compass. The reason for doing this, if you're thinking of buying one of these, then it will give you somewhere to start. I'm not trying to tell you which one to buy. And remember, I'm only looking at this from a hill walking and trekking viewpoint because I'm not qualified in any way to give another viewpoint, like such as military or what have you. Now, we've all watched videos where, you know, something versus something. And in most of them, not all, but most of them, the presenter is trying to convince you that this something is better than that something by giving lots of different reasons. Also, <laughs> some people are trying to sell you <laughs> one of the things that they recommend. So on that point, I have to say that I am not paid, nor am I on commission, or receive any type of benefit from any compass manufacturers. So I'm not going to be doing that today. But when I say I'm not going to compare them, the reason for that is, well, I, I said I was going to compare them, but really they're not comparable. Because these three compasses are totally different. They're probably the best compasses of their type, um, but you can't compare these. So you need to decide what you want your compass to do and what you want it for. As an example, the Kamenga is a sighting compass. So you would look through it, you'd take a, a bearing from something and you'd use that bearing either to pass it on to somebody else or you'd go towards it or something. Um, you can also use it, if you stretch it out, you can use it with a map because it's got a flat edge. The Francis Barker military compass is only a marching compass. So somebody higher up the command chain would give you a bearing to follow. You'd set your bearing and you'd follow it. Or you can also use it as a sighting compass uh, by looking through the prism, taking a bearing off something and passing it up the command chain. What you can't do is, well you can, but it's extremely difficult to use these on their own with a map. They really need a protractor or a ruler or something else. So this is a marching compass, this is a sighting compass, and this is a standard base plate compass. So it's got a base plate and it's got a compass on it, and that's all it has. Anyway, where were we? Let's do the comparisons. <laughs> Let's start off with, to me, what is the most important thing, the price. <laughs> How much do they cost? It depends where you live in the world with currency fluctuations and supply chains and all the rest of it. But in general, you can get five of these for the price of one of these. So you can get five silver Expedition 4s for the price of one Kamenga 3H. You can get five Kamenga 3Hs for the price of one Francis Barker M73. The reason for that is quite simple, is the manufacturing process. These things are mass produced in China. They whiz through the factory and they come out the other end. The Kamengas are volume produced in America, um, once again, and they come out. Not, not as many as the silver, but they, you know, a lot of them come out. It makes them slightly more expensive, but not too much. The Francis Barker M73 is, how can I put it, it's an engineering masterpiece. It's, it's sold as the best compass in the world, which if it's just down to manufacturing quality, then it is. If it's down to what you're going to use it for, then the best compass in the world is the one that you can use well. But so anyway, 20 pounds, 100 pounds, 500 pounds. So let's carry on. Now what I've got is I've got a matrix of a few uh, different comparisons that I'm going to use, and I'll put these up on your screen now. So to me, the first tick goes to the silver because it's cheaper. So <laughs> that gets a tick. Uh, right, let's carry on with the next one. So the next thing I'm going to look at is how big are they? What is the size and the weight? For a lot of people nowadays, that's not really a major consideration. When, in my youth, I used to go leaping around the Himalayas so with <laughs> 50 kilo rucksacks. So it was, uh, but nowadays I don't do that anymore. So if we look at these, if we look at the Kamenga and the Francis Barker, let's face it. I mean, I could measure them and give you the exact millimeters and all the rest of it, but they're virtually the same. Um, so that's that. Now, this one is slightly longer, um, but obviously it's a lot thinner. So size-wise, we'll, we'll assume that they're all the same and they can all get a tick. Now, how much do they weigh? Let's have a look. I've brought a weighing scales. So first off, the Francis Barker is 232 grams 
or eight and a quarter ounces. Next, the Kamenga is 150 grams or five and three eighths ounces. And last but not least, we have the silver, which is 38 grams or one and three eighths ounces. So this is heaviest, this is um, next heaviest, and this is obviously the lightest. So once again, the silver gets a tick for that because um, weight sometimes important. Okay, the next thing I'm going to look at is what are they made of? Um, are they all metal, which may be better in some circumstances? So let's have a look. We've got the, the uh, silver, which is all plastic. I'm not sure. We've got the Kamenga, which is mainly metal, except for the bezel at the top, which is made of plastic. And the Francis Barker, which we've got here. This is all metal, and the, um, the dial itself is mother of pearl. So I'd say the Kamenga and the uh, Francis Barker both get a tick for that because they're predominantly metal. So this is all metal except for the bezel. This is all metal except for the, uh, the dial itself. And the silver, unfortunately, gets no ticks. <laughs> so we'll carry on. The next thing I'm going to look at is, are there any manufacturing errors? Are there, is there anything wrong with them when they come out of the box? I've got all these compasses at virtually the same time. So they should still be in the same condition. So I'm going to get the camera and I'm going to zoom in and inspect them really closely for errors. So the first one to look at is the silver. I can't see any errors whatsoever. Um, and I do study compasses a lot, so I would pick it up. So that, that one seems fine. OK, so let's have a look at the next one, which is the Kamenga. And we'll turn it over. As you can see, everything's done up. It all fits together nicely. Oh, hang on a minute, what's this? Let me get a pencil pointer so you can see what I'm talking I've just picked this up, I didn't notice this before. If you note it, there. Let me turn it round so you can actually see what I'm talking about. You see the bezel here? Inside the bezel is a rubber ring which seals, um, stops water getting into it. And just here, can you see there? It's not sealed so water could get into the inside of the compass. So I don't know if you can see that, I'll bring it a bit closer, there. Just there, I've never actually noticed this, the rubber O-ring underneath the bezel isn't correctly seated into the housing, so therefore it doesn't form a waterproof seal. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, but other than that, it seems fine. I can't see anything wrong with it. There are no errors that I can see, okay? And last but not least, the Francis Barker. Let's have a look. Everything seems to work. There are no scratches, no dents, no obvious errors. Um, does the adjustment, does it hold in place? You don't have this on other compasses. Um, yeah, that holds it nice and solidly. Anyway, I can't see any errors on this. So a tick for the uh, Francis Barker and for the silver. And unfortunately, no tick for the Kamenga. Next, we'll actually look at replacement parts. Can you get replacement parts for these? I would say, for the Kamenga, you can do, I suppose, if you ring them up. I know of people who have got spare parts, but it's very difficult for the simple reason is the way they're manufactured. Um, so you may be able to get parts, uh, parts for that, but uh, it's not easy. For the silver, no, you can't get anything for it. If it gets a bubble in it or something, or it gets cracked, you just need to throw it away and get another one. For the Francis Barker, you can get every single part replaced. Um, all you do, say the wire breaks or the, this doesn't work or whatever doesn't work, send it back to the company and they will simply repair it and send it back to you. So a tick for this one and half a tick for this one. <laughs> right, next, the most important thing. The most important thing with a compass is, does it work? Can you use it with a map? And is it accurate? And is it accurate repeatedly? Um, so they're what I'm going to be testing. So first thing I need to do is I need to get my calculator out and I'm going to draw a line on this piece of wood, um, which is north-south. I know where the sun is. I know what the time of day is and the days in the solar year that have gone past. I also know what the magnetic declination for this particular area is today, which is 0.24. Um, so 
give me two minutes and I shall use my calculator and I'll draw a line on here that points directly north. So this line here, this is exactly north-south, um, my current location. So the first one to test, which is this. Now I don't know if you've ever held one, but if I'll try and let you see this, I'll bring it in close. I don't know if you can see that, but at the bottom of the thumb loop, exactly in the center, is a small notch that's white. Um, so I'm going to use that is exactly centered on the, uh, the compass. So I'm going to very carefully put that notch onto the line, which is there, and then I'm going to put the wire directly over the pencil mark. Oh, I've moved it off here. Let's get this straight. There and there. And as you can see, <laughs> that is absolutely perfect. Um, the index mark is now directly over the north pointing section, the dash on the dial. So this one points north. So next, the Kamenga. Now, this doesn't have a notch on the bottom of the thumb loop, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bot the edge of the compass, the, the metal edge, um, which is there. Now, if this is correct, then the index mark, which is this line here, should be directly underneath the north pointing arrow. Let's get this on the line properly, so there's no jiggery pokey. And there you go, the Kamenga is precisely correct. So the index line is directly over the north arrow. And last but not least, we have the silver. And for the silver, I'm going to use the, um, these black lines here. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to put this black line, which is actually the parallax line. That's the correct name for it. So we'll use this. Now, that is the north. Let's set this to north. So here we go. Let's set that directly north. Oh, there's a problem. If you, let me make sure this is precise. This is, doesn't point north. If you look, the line is now direct. I'll use the longer line just to check this. I don't want to say it's wrong when it's not. So there you go. Let's put it onto the parallax line. And if you look, the north pointing section of the needle is actually pointing about half a degree to the right as I'm looking at it. So it's not pointing at zero degrees, it's actually pointing at 359.5 degrees. Oh, that's not, a, so it's a tick for the, <laughs> but that's, that's, why, that's why one of these is a fifth of the price of the Kamenga, which is a fifth of the price of the M73. So there is a tick for these two, if I don't drop them, there's a tick for these two and a definite no tick for this one. When you get your compass and you're taking a sighting, how long does it take for the dial to stop moving so you can actually get it? And I'm going to time it to the second. Let's have a look. So bear with me on this and I shall zoom in. So all I'm going to do with each compass is set it at right angles approximately to this new piece of wood. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and then see how long it takes the, uh, the dial to stop moving. Here we go with the first one. Okay, and the next one is the uh, Kamenga. And last but not least, the silver. So here we go, and rotate. The next thing to test is at what angle does the compass stop working? So you know when you get a compass, you're supposed to hold it perfectly level and do whatever it is you're going to do with it. But if your hand isn't exactly straight, how much does that affect the compass? Because not everybody can keep a compass perfectly straight. So what I'm going to do is I've got a highly technical piece of, info, uh, sort of information technology here. It's called a, a rock. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it underneath there and move this up. So it gets steeper and steeper until the compass stops working. And then I'll record the, uh, the angle. So while we've got the Kamenga here, we may as well use that one first. So I'll zoom in so you can actually check that I'm doing this uh, truthfully. <laughs> That's a, there's no benefit to me either way, but I'll zoom in so you can look what I'm doing. So the idea of this test is, this is a, the board is on an angle 
and if you rotate the whole compass, the, the dial turns to point north. At what time or at what angle does that stop happening? Let's turn the Kamenga angle up slightly, a little bit more. Yeah, it still works, just, not very, uh, it's juddering a bit. Let's turn it up again. Nope, it stopped working there. So let's turn it down a bit, see when it actually stops. If my rock would, uh, no, oh, it's just moving there. So that's the point that the Kamenga stops working. I need to check that angle and I'll use this uh, little Bosch thing that I've got, if you can see that. And that gives us the exact angle. So let's turn it over. And that gives us an angle of, let's have a look, 13 degrees. So 13 degrees on this and the Kamenga stops working. And the next one to test is the Francis Barker. The angle that the Francis Barker stopped working was 15 degrees. So last but not least, we have the silver. And the angle that the uh, silver stopped working was 13 degrees. So I think we can say that that's a tick for everybody. Now obviously there are a few other things to consider when you're looking at the difference between the three compasses. As an example, bezel graduation. Can you set a precise walking direction on your compass? On the silver, yes you can. You can set it, it comes in two degree increments. On the Francis Barker, you can actually set it down to a quarter of a degree increments. Um, so that gets a definite tick and so does that. This one, you can only set it in three degrees. So if your bearing is, um, sorry, three degree clicks. So if your bearing is seven, you'd need to round it down to six because then you, you can set it in three degree increments. If your bearing is 19, then you would have to round it down to 18 or round it up to 21. So no tick for that. Now, and the next thing we need to look at is, let's have a look. Are they tritium? Do they glow at night? This one does, and so does the Francis Barker. The silver has some sort of luminous paint, which it only lasts a couple of hours. So if, you're, if it's in the winter and you start walking at, I don't know, four o'clock in the evening, it's gonna be dark in half an hour. So by 10 o'clock, your compass, uh, you'd have to use a head torch. Whereas the other two, the Kamanga 3H and the Barker M73, they will, apparently, they've got a half life of, half life of 12 years. So even if you're in the dark for 12 years, they'll, they'll keep glowing. Um, next thing, does it come with a lanyard? Yes, this, the Kamenga 3H is the only compass I know of that comes with a correct size lanyard. That's how long your lanyard should be. And so you attach it to something and you can use it. The silver comes with a lanyard, but it's not gonna get a tick because it's too small. It's, if you attack, you, you, it just doesn't work. I don't know why they keep doing this. I'm sure that silver have looked into this, but for some reason they always give you a lanyard that's just too small to use. Um, the Francis Barker doesn't come with a lanyard at all. And more importantly, you can't add one yourself. I suppose you could put it through the thumb loop but that wouldn't be really convenient. So this definitely doesn't get a tick for that. Um, what's now, I'm looking down here, here we go. So the next thing, pouch quality. <laughs> now, when you get these, they come with a pouch for carrying them. The silver doesn't, so no tick for the silver. The, uh, the Kamenga does, and if we put the Kamenga in, we can see that it fits the, uh, the pouch really well. I'm saying that, I can't get the damn thing in now. So that's in there. So the pouch goes into there. Now the Francis Barker also comes with a pouch. This is a leather made pouch. It's actually very, very high quality. Um, sorry, I'll rephrase that. It should be high quality, but due to lack of thought, it's, um, it's not, <laughs> it should be high quality, but it's not. As an example, if you look at the Kamenga pouch, there's a small hole in the bottom of the Kamenga pouch. There isn't in this one here. So if these are used in the rain, which let's face it, today is unusual in England. Normally it rains a lot. If, these, if you've got these attached to your, the belt loop, so there's a belt loop and there's a belt loop. Now if you've got these attached to your belt, these are gonna get water in. On the Kamenga, it makes no difference because the water would just run out the hole. On this thing here, the water would just fill up completely and stay there because there's no escape there's nowhere for it to escape to um, and your compass will be sitting in water until uh, 
you realise and took it out. So anyway, that's the basics. Don't forget, I'm not tr recommending which one that you know you get. I'm just coming up with a few of the differences. There are a lot more, um, but these particular compasses, these three compasses, are in my opinion, and other people will disagree and put it in the comments, no doubt, but I would say these are the best compasses anywhere of their type. So the Silver Expedition 4 is the best um, base plate compass by far. The Francis Barker M73 is the best prismatic compass there is. Um, simple as that. Nothing, no other prismatic comes close. The Kamenga 3H Providing you do get the 3H with the uh, tritium uh, illumination, then this is the, in my opinion, the best lens attic compass that you can get. So these are the best types of compasses of their type. As I said earlier on, they're not really comparable because they're designed to do different things. But hopefully you've now got a start point if you want to consider looking at one of these compasses. Thanks for watching.